you might live in the Bible Belt if. If there's a church for every four people and two in every strip mall, you might live in the Bible Belt. If your local public high school invites an area church to hold a mandatory evangelistic meeting on campus in the middle of the school day, you might live in the Bible Belt. That happened at the school next door to me, by the way. They got sued for that because, and they got sued by a Christian who said, that's, that's actually not the American way to do this. That you can't make it mandatory. But anyway, maybe for another talk. Uh, if, oh, you know this one. If you move to a new area, the first question they ask you is, what line of work are you in? The second question they ask is, what church do you go to? Exactly. It's, it's, you can count on it. You can bank on it. Uh, the third question is usually about football. And like, like you care about local football, and you just move to the area. But anyway, it's always about where to go to church. And of course, if you say, oh, I don't go to church, their response is, come to my church. You know, you'll love it there. All right. Um, if they play only Christian music at your doctor's office and your dentist's office and at the auto shop and at the gas station, and every clinic waiting room has either Bibles or tracts on the tables. You might live in the Bible Belt. If your bank has Bible verses scrolling across its marquee instead of interest rates. <laughs> There's a chain in, in my city that's that way. Uh, if every employer you've had for the last 10 years has open staff meetings and meals with prayer and has Bible quotations in their email signature, you might live in the Bible Belt. If instead of goodbye, everyone tells you to have a blessed day. If instead of a tip, they leave you a fake $20 bill with the plan of salvation on the back. I bet you do that at some point, too. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, if you can't go to the local coffee shop without sitting next to people having a Bible study or an accountability group, you might live in the Bible Belt. If you can't buy, buy liquor on Sundays because the liquor stores are closed, or, in fact, if you can't buy liquor at all in your county, you might live in the Bible Belt. If every private school in your area is run by a church and the public schools really aren't that different, you might live in the Bible Belt. If your whole community is up in arms about not being able to voice a Christian prayer at the start of football games, because that's the way we've always done it, you might live in the Bible Belt. If people around you feel that not being able to subjugate others to their beliefs infringes on their religious freedom, you might live in the Bible Belt. If people assume you share all their bigotries, and speak to you in dog whistle language about all the people they hate. Actually, that's not just a Bible Belt thing, is it? Uh, and honestly, I should stop here and point out that the Bible Belt is not just one place. If you look at the statistics, the Bible Belt is really a subculture that's all over the country. It's really outside the United States too, but it's concentrated in the United States and it's particularly concentrated in the Deep South. But if you go look at a map, the most evangelical and fundamentalist places are actually spread out all over the country. They're just generally aggregated away from the cities. But in the Deep South, even the cities are thick with this culture. It's just more concentrated. Uh, anyway, if you see signs along the highway that say, who is Jesus? Even though 99% of your population already knows, you might live in the Bible Belt. If your public library carries books on spiritual warfare, but doesn't care anything about Buddhism, Hinduism, or Islam, or humanism, you might live in the Bible Belt. If your congregation refers to, excuse me, if your congressman refers to evolution and the Big Bang as lies straight from the pit of hell. <laughs> you remember that, right? That was in Georgia, and that guy is actually on the, um, the science subcommittee for Congress. Lies from the pit of hell, he says. If you're surrounded by people who think evolution is a monkey giving birth to a human, you probably live in the Bible Belt, although, again, you could be in a lot of places. If every restaurant, sports bar, electronic store, or doctor's office with a TV has it set to Fox News, <laughs> you might live in the Bible Belt. If you play a game on your drive to work called I Spy the Religious Vanity Plate and win every day, <laughs> you might live in the Bible Belt. Three words, Christian Roller Rink. And the reason I point this one out is this one was a personal one, but just a few minutes from my house, the only Christian, uh, well, the only skating rink near me uh, has Bible verses all over the floor, and they have them on the walls, and they play only Christian music as you skate around. Uh, anyway, uh, that's Mississippi. If your governor states that anyone who opposes a personhood amendment works for the devil, my governor did that. You might live in the Bible Belt. If the chief justice of your state Supreme Court says that the First Amendment only protects Christians, that would be next door to y'all in Alabama. 
Uh, that was just last week. If most of the people who identify themselves as politically progressive build all of their arguments out of alternative interpretations of the Bible, think about that for a second. You might live in the Bible Belt. If homophobia is a viable political strategy in your district, <laughs> you might live in the Bible Belt. And then finally, this is one I contributed. If God's Not Dead sells out four weekends in a row in your town, you might live in the Bible Belt. It did. Yeah, four weeks in a row. Full, sold out. All right, now, one more I want to add is, and that is that not everyone here would call themselves atheists or agnostics. There's a, there's a wide range of kind of humanists. Um, and if you are not within the fold of evangelicalism, you've got to deal with the same sorts of problems as, uh, as people who are, who are in that fold. But it's even worse if you're more explicitly a non-theist, whether you call yourself atheist or agnostic. And for some reason, people get a lot more worked up about the word atheist than they do agnostic. Um, it doesn't even always mean different things. It depends on how you define the words. Uh, and I have the hardest time making people understand that. But you may be godless in Dixie too. If you're a non-theist living in the South, you're, you're godless in Dixie. Uh, I think we should have shirts that say, I am godless in Dixie. Would you wear one of those? Probably, no you wouldn't. No you wouldn't. In public, you wear them in your house. Okay, um, you might be godless in Dixie if, if you find most of your real life friends by making eye contact during group prayers. <laughs> you might be godless in Dixie. If you identify as a non-Christian on your dating profile only to have 30 people start preaching and proselytizing you, you might be godless in Dixie. Uh, although that came from a friend in Chicago, so once again, this is not just a Southern thing. If meeting up with other atheists is like joining a secret society, you might, you might be godless in Dixie. If you have to join a secret group on Facebook in order to have a place where you can speak freely, you might be godless in Dixie. If you have to create a fake identity to avoid angering everyone in your entire family every single day on social media, you might be godless in Dixie. If you have to regularly tell people, no, I don't worship Satan, you might be godless in Dixie. If people stop to read your bumper sticker and then immediately begin praying for you, yeah, this happens. Uh, if your car has been keyed as a result of a humanist or an evolution sticker, you might be godless in Dixie. And then finally, uh, if people assume that being a humanist or an atheist means that you're also a communist, you probably live in the South. Okay, the last two are a little bit more serious. If you have to have a conversation with your elementary school child about weighing the dangers of being honest versus keeping his mouth shut in order to avoid being bullied by other children and the teacher, you might be godless in Dixie. And that's fresh out of the last week, by the way. If you worry about losing your job because your boss might find out that you don't believe in his religion and his perception of you could suddenly flip like a switch and he would assume that you were unethical and quote, not a team player. And suddenly there are little nitpicky things that you do wrong he never noticed before, but now they are a huge problem for the company. You might be godless in Dixie. Okay, so y'all identify with some of these or at least you're familiar with, you've seen some people go through this. None of these are made up. These are pulled right out of regular daily life for somebody living in the South. And people who don't live here don't get it. And that's fine. I'm glad they have a different situation. I'm glad they can just be who they are. And they don't have to talk about what they're not. Even the word atheist is an annoying word because it's a negative word. It just says something about what you're not or what you don't believe. That defines you in terms of what somebody else believes, right? Uh, that's why I like the word humanist because it actually is a positive statement of something that we believe in. We believe that people can actually do things that are worthwhile. And that's why we, we, we work on those things. And, and we don't use the same vocabulary and that bugs people because you're not, you're not using the right code words. But many times you're actually after the same things as long as it has to do with this world stuff. So what I wanna talk about with what's, what's remaining of my time is how to be godless in Dixie. Okay, how, do you, how does one handle this situation uh, in, in a way that's, that's productive, individually and as a group? And then, uh, and then I'm also going to talk about how not to be godless and Dixie.